Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, football, eh? Football! Yeah. Oh, how can you not love football? The Socceroos are doing us proud in South Africa. Some old fool in Melbourne described Indigenous AFL players as cannibals. And Andrew Johns, one of the greatest to ever play rugby league, is now a dim-witted, dickhead, stupid, racist clown. <laughs> Johns has brought the game into even more disrepute, if that were actually possible. <laughs> uh, he says they are at an informal team meeting, just mucking around, enjoying each other's company. So naturally, he decided to describe Queensland player Greg Inglis as a black C asterisk. <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> asterisk. <laughs> I cannot believe he said that. I mean, one asterisk is enough, <laughs> isn't it? It's hard enough, just one of them, for a league player. But three in a row? <laughs> Phenomenal! <laughs> and what's an informal team meeting in rugby league? <laughs> Pants optional? <laughs> Since he made the comments, Johns has been backpedalling so fast he could end up in the 60s. But he'd like it there, the white Australia policy is still in force. <laughs> Channel 9 has accepted his apology and won't sack him. In fact, they're grooming Andrew to be the next Daryl Summers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's received so much bad publicity, there's also a good chance Channel 7 will offer him his own show. Salary cap rorts, racism, fornication, defecation, the writing's on the wall. Sure, it's spelt wrong and in excrement. <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> Rugby league is over. It's finished. Take your balls and the balls of the bloke next year. Go home. <laughs> there are plenty of other sports the players could slot straight into. Union. <laughs> Aussie rules. Soccer. Group poo-poo sex. <laughs> The list goes on. <laughs> there are lots of useful occupations uh, for Johns and his mates in the real world. For example, biofuel. Put them in a massive scrum. Tell them to push. <laughs> and those in the centre will be turned into coal or oil. <laughs> we could create renewable energy by putting them on a treadmill with a woman just out of reach. <laughs> The federal election campaign will kick off any day now, which means one thing. The parties are about to start an advertising war in a desperate attempt to convince us they're not quite as bad as the other lot. <laughs> the government has unlocked $38 million in emergency ad funding. The emergency being that no one likes Kevin anymore. <laughs> Rudd's desperate to stay in power. He wants to be Prime Minister when Obama finally decides to turn up. <laughs> But the Liberals will have the most money to spend on ads, thanks to their major backers, who have big holes in the ground that are full of it. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can hear the slogan now. What's mine is yours, except the mines, they're ours. <laughs> it's gonna be a dirty campaign. Both major parties will target each other's leaders. Kevin is an unconvincing nerd. Abbott is a fundamentalist creep. <laughs> there you go, just save the country $100 million. <laughs> the government should go with their strengths. Huh? They should go with their strengths. Kevin, he'll rhyme again next year. <laughs> All the opposition needs to do is drop the seven. Kevin. Oh. <laughs> they want slogans? I'll give them slogans. Vote Labour. We believe in change, as Kevin will soon find out. <laughs> Vote for Tony Abbott. Not just fit to run the country, Fit to run around it. <laughs> the National Party's campaign will be aimed firmly at the farmer because there's only one left and he hasn't made up his mind yet. <laughs> Vote for the Nationals. Australia is a wide brown land. Let's dig it up and sell it to China. <laughs> and that's the good news.
tonight because it's not whether you win or lose, it's how much you lose by. The enforcer, Mikey Robbins. <laughs> the master tactician, Cal Wilson. <laughs> and the secret weapon, Peter Boner. <laughs> and they're going in low and hard at the best and fairest, Claire Hooper. The rock-solid Frank Woodley. Yeah. And just back from winning the Asian Cup, the first major trophy in Australian football history, the captain of the mighty Matildas, Melissa Barbieri. Yeah. Barbieri, Barbieri. <laughs> Melissa Barbieri. The, the R's are yeah, really Barbieri. getting me into Barbieri. Barbieri. Barbieri, yeah. Barbieri. Barbieri. <laughs> I could watch you do that all night. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like? The win. Um, what was the win like? Well, it's uh, it's a, it's really a great honour to um, achieve such a great. Move the bullshit aside. Let's get on. <laughs> we were fantastic. We just went in there and destroyed all teams. Now, yeah, pretty easy actually. <laughs> No, no, really. It was really, um, it was a great honour to represent your country, but to actually lift the trophy at the end of all that hard work, uh, it's just fantastic. And were you expecting it at all? Did you think you'd go all the way through to the No, the we final, actually or? aren't. Uh, we weren't pipped as any of the favourites. Japan was the favourite that we pipped them in the semi-final, so... <laughs> and have, they, have you got the sponsorship running in at the moment? You've got the big... Deals coming? Oh, yeah, for, uh, Fast and Furious, really. Uh, I can't uh, hold them back. Um... <laughs> 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 no takers? Okay, no worries. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's a few people out yeah. there at the moment going, this you could work very well. Yeah. Yeah, so. oh, well, hopefully. What I, what I want to know is, what do you do after you win? Because, like, it must be so. Do you go home and sleep? Or do you go out? <laughs> Do karaoke? Like, what do you do? What do you do <laughs> afterwards? We work in China. Please yeah. tell me it's like when a rugby league team wins. <laughs> um, <laughs> we like to keep our little secrets. <laughs> you know, half of us, the older geriatric half, uh, kind of warm, uh, nice beer by the end of the night because we haven't been able to drink it. But the young'uns uh, get right into it. But, uh, you know. We keep a leash on them as much as we can. <laughs> is, 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 that, is that a real, real leash? Uh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey. Thanks for your help. We'll give you a ticket into the change rooms. Don't worry, Mikey. No. Oh. No. Oh, is that, is that bad? No. 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 Uh, you've no. made a mistake there. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Verner? Oh, all right. Love to have you on. Again. Thank you very much. I've never achieved anything in my life. I've never won anything in my life either. Runner oh. up, runner up, uh, Warrawee Wildcats under 10s. <laughs> Come on, you're <laughs> <that's laughs> <that's laughs> I, I got a ribbon for it, and I've still got the ribbon. I actually have one sadder. I was under 10s, uh, South Newcastle Rugby League, most improved forward. Oh. Which oh. meant that my dad gave the coach a slab of VB. <laughs> <laughs> got a little better. Yeah, just, oh, the, little, the little fat boy ran a metre. Give him a trophy. <laughs> this is true. In, in my under nines, uh, AFL football, um, got into the grand final and in the grand final, we kicked one point <laughs> and we won. <laughs> My biggest sporting achievement is that at my primary school I was the captain of the girls' cricket team for 20 minutes <laughs> before they realised that I didn't know how to play and they took the bag off me. <laughs> so Melissa, have you always been good at sport? Clearly we're, we're all pretty hopeless. Well, I did enjoy my sport as, as a youngin. I was a very big tomboy at that, uh, at that age. I had two brothers, followed them everywhere and tried my best at everything and just seemed to pick up more adaptly to uh, football and basketball and tennis. That oh, was just my skill. I was multi skill. I had to actually choose when I was 16 which uh, way oh. I'd I'm go. glad you stopped after the three sports because if you had it kept going, yeah. you would have started to shit us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this, and I was great at this, and this, and this. No, no. Fantastic. I was actually going to keep going, but then I thought. <laughs> how, how, how did you really feel about S Sam Stozer? a week later, taking the glory in the papers. Well, yeah, apparently there's only room for one impressive female sport or team, uh, you know, at, at any one stage. So she did steal our thunder a bit. Um, losing in the final, yeah. I wasn't happy. No, we all want Aussies to win, come on. I actually, yeah. I was, I got into a final and, and I choked really badly in the final, but it was a, a best dramatic death 
uh, <laughs> competition, and so I, I won. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Woodley, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to begin our team sport now. We get into the gear with What's the Story, Mikey Calpita. Yes. Put the pedal to the metal. Scaphe. Oh, yes. Fine, gentlemen. Legend. Yeah? A very uh... fast car. <laughs> yes. All right, well, clearly he knows how to drive one of those extraordinarily quickly. <laughs> this this um, must be something to do with the fact that he came out over the week and said... He came out over yeah, the weekend? Yeah, big surprise, yeah. <laughs> uh, he came out and said that he thinks that these, uh, the speed limit should be raised in certain areas to 140 k's and that kids shouldn't be allowed to be taught to drive by their parents. I agree. I, I think I'm fine with the kids uh, around the school zones at 40 when they're get, going to and from school, but once they're in school, 140. <laughs> Once they're, once they're in the classroom, 140 up and down the outside. You know what? There are two reasons for that, Pete. A, it's, it's safe for driving. B, it would stop truancy. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, oh, yeah, uh, Scaife's come out because he, he went over to up to Germany where they have th things called the Autobahn, which is basically, you know, these huge... That's a barn that can do it all by itself. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, these, these huge uh, roads that Germans <laughs> drive to very fast to fun places like Poland and they're not leave for a while. Um, Let it go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's the U-turn. I cannot find Vans the turning. Oh, my God, I'm in Warsaw. They said that's in Warsaw. No, no. Um, and he said that basically well, one thing we, we should do is, you know, A, improve driver training, which is, is very sensible, but also to raise the speed limit in certain areas because 110 is, you know, just too slow. It's irritating, Mikey. Yeah. It's really irritating to drive behind country. people. It's a big Well, if I've got to get anywhere, uh, you know, interesting... <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it takes a while to get there. They do have it, 10 points. Mm -hmm. If you can drive like Mark Scaife, raise yeah. it to 140, but who can? Oh, look, if we could all drive like Mark Scaife, raise it to 225, what the hell? <laughs> I reckon it depends on your car. I think bits would fly off mine if I took it out of the car. Unfortunately, I don't have the information to make this joke work. Um, but <laughs> uh, if I'm trying to get somewhere really quickly, unfortunately, I've got that car that the guy in Back to the Future's got. DeLorean, so when I, it's the a DeLorean, DeLorean, that's it, that's what I needed. I've got the DeLorean. So if I go too fast, I end up being later than I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Champion racing driver Mark Scaife has opened a can of worms by calling for the speed limit on Victoria's freeways to be raised to 140 kilometres an hour. The best bit is, if you're doing 140 on a clear night, the stars warp like hyperspace on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> of course, you have to be pretty drunk. <laughs> Scaife cited the autobahns in Germany, where a no-speed limit rule has sadly not resulted in the deaths of any of their World Cup team. <laughs> oh, we're, we're clapping and laughing at someone's demise. But Premier John Brumby said you can't raise the limit to 140 because if you drive at that speed in Victoria, you'll lose your licence. <laughs> He hasn't quite grasped the full powers of his job. <laughs> maybe he's thinking, maybe he's thinking some kind of vacuum that happens in the car, so your licence will just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Scaife is spot on here. After all, who better to give us road safety suggestions than someone who thinks driving in a circle for eight hours is an occupation? <laughs> And champagne is something you pour over your head. <laughs> Claire, Frank, Melissa, ready to sound off? Yeah. Uh, hearing Give expert. Done, Paul. Oh, I didn't get, what was it? I, 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 well, I can't hear the ref. What? Ah, ah beautiful yeah. silence. Maybe Claire, you tell them what it is on the count of three. One, two, three. Well, this Uh, ten points, I think. Ten points. Did you want to add anything to that? 
the, the, the hearing expert from before, he was... Uh, he said something like it, people, people don't realise the impact on, on your hearing and the fact that they're, they're, the Vavazella, the Vuvuzela, gets to the same decibel. Vuvuzela. 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 Well, it apparently is loud as a gunshot, which is quite a coincidence because they make me think of guns. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the first, the first World Cup game I tuned into, I thought, why are they slaughtering cattle? <laughs> It was, like, it was like watching the football, watching the football, but hearing the Grand Prix. It's like just that, all like blowflies driving the Grand Prix. It was, terrible. It was really unfortunate for me because I, when I, I finally thought, what is that? A swarm of bees? What's going on? And when I finally adjusted to it, and a hive actually broke out in my window, and all these bees <laughs> came in. I didn't run. I just sat there. I was stung badly. <laughs> You wait till Austria get the World Cup because they use castrati. <laughs> That's an ice cream, isn't it? it is. yeah. <laughs> very chilly. <laughs> and not very happy. No. <laughs> Do you blow the castrati? Oh. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. There's, there's no point. No, no point. <laughs> the sound of the World Cup is the Vuvuzela, a one metre long, gently soothing plastic trumpet. <laughs> it's named after the Zulu word for Vuvuzela, which is Vuvuzela. <laughs> They're so annoying, Nelson Mandela has asked to be put back into the peace and quiet of solitary confinement. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, 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 we don't like you anymore, Paul. At 127 decibels, the Vuvuzela is louder than a chainsaw and became popular in South Africa after chainsaws were banned from major sporting events. <laughs> Not surprisingly, some coaches are calling for the horns to be banned, but no one can hear them. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, I, I have one here. Oh. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, that's pathetic. <laughs> oh, do, do better. Go on, have a crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, the sweet sound of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Water buffalo blowing its nose. <laughs> you know, that's how I meet most of my water buffaloes. <laughs> I, I find them strangely uh, attractive. I think every South Melbourne supporter, I, I'm from Melbourne, South Melbourne have had these things for years and they're cringing at the sight of you guys yeah. even trying that. Yeah. Give it a good I, belt. Yeah, yeah, give it a good belt. Feel like Christopher yeah. Columbus. <laughs> like she land. <laughs> Right. Actually, I don't know why, but the, f the first thing I'm thinking of is, is, is... <laughs> the thing I love about them, the thing I love about them is that after you, you use them during the game to have some fun, but there's a, per there's a kind of a threshold, and then where it's just so loud, and on the way out you have to go, what was that? <laughs> what just that? That's, 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 has anyone seen Big Ears? <laughs> You must be. You're going to be the one person that's able to do yeah, it. I do don't it? know. I, the pressure is on. The pressure is on. Mm. Oh. 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 I feel like an elephant, though. <laughs> You've got it. You've got, got the it. talent. I, I think it's actually addictive. Yeah. I, you know, doctors what, are, what, do you, what do you do? What do you do, Melissa? It's the... <laughs> <laughs> Alive in the stadiums, I'm gonna pass out. It's like uh, it's like using a. Uh, it's like using. Oh. Okay, now what happens when I suck? Oh. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Uh, it's, like using a, it's like using an iPhone. It's so much fun to do it, but for everyone else, it's just, oh, it shits me.
During the break, as we made the Zulu gods angry, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. <laughs> Robbins, Wilson and Bernagot. A memorial. <laughs> I, I feel like a really angry blackboard. <laughs> You look, you look like the deathogram I sent my nana. <laughs> hurry, hurry up, Mr. Squiggle, time to die. Oh. Oh. It looks like there's been a motorcycle accident, but the person was killed at the same time they were buried. <laughs> Went straight through the windscreen and into his own gravestone. Yeah. It was very convenient. I tell you what, though. I, I so want this for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> this will freak the neighbourhood kids out. A you want some candy? <laughs> I've got candy in my coffin. <laughs> we also have composting equipment. A box of worms. <gasps> so I'm very excited about feeling nervous, gentlemen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so familiar. <laughs> The booster box as well of live worms. The booster box. The booster of worms. box. Are you putting are you putting those gloves on because Paul wants the worms back? <laughs> oh you horrible creature. Ah, oh. ah they oh. really are oh. alive and wormy. Mum, I've got worms! <laughs> there you go, worms. They're good, they're good go. eating. And uh, <laughs> and finally this. Well, because I can't sing, uh, I've uh, recruited a minstrel who happened oh. to be done strolling by. New album coming out, Ray Thistlethwaite from Thirsty Merc, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Hey Ray, how are you? Good, thanks. Are you happy with the new album? I'm very happy with the new album. And you, you're doing a big tour on the back of this? Ah, uh, yes. Starts Wednesday in Canberra. Oh, rock capital of Australia. Something like that. Actually, I think, I think uh, that date moved, actually. Well, it hasn't, <laughs> certainly hasn't moved from the back of my totally up-to-date CD yeah. that someone gave me. Uh, I think the first gig is in Wollongong on the first. Oh. <laughs> but, I need to say this, if you want tickets, uh, go to www.thirstymerc.com. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to whenever they arrive in Canberra. <laughs> so do you have a, uh, a clue for us? Ah, uh, yes I do, actually. Okay. Satellites gone up to the sky. Things like that drive me out of my mind I watched it for a little while I like to watch things on TV Satellite of love Satellite of Satellite of love, satellite. First in work in the stores, go and get it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you soon. Great, this will wait. <laughs> and Hooper, Woodley, and Barbieri have fine china. These are the teacups for when you want to drink tea with Bundy in it. <laughs> oh, mm, you know, you know what it reminds soft. me of. My my uh, brother, my older brother, is a bit of a bit of a bogan, bit of a flannel flannelette shirt wearing chap, and he actually broke his little finger motor, motorbike riding, and now whenever he drinks tea, it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this just feels like it's made for him. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. But oh, and then my, uh, my we one. also have yes, exercise yeah, equipment. Like a, size. That's the other way. Is that yeah. what you meant to? Yeah, a bit of help. That'll be good. And I'll stretch from here, maybe. That's good. So, yeah, that's the way. So it's something. Oh no! Back up! Back up! There we go. Um, yeah, it's. <laughs> we had one of those lying around the house when I was a kid. They don't work. <laughs> They do, they I think you have to pick them well, up. Well, you've got to pick them up and use them. <laughs> I mean, clearly, you've got to use them. I but... tell you what, it's funny, though. If you tie two cats together... <laughs> 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 
Except then you've got to, after, if you do that for a long time, you've got to deal with some really muscular cats. <laughs> <laughs> and finally this. Uh, no, I'm not going to sing. The only <laughs> song I sing is the Australian anthem with my hand on my heart. <laughs> so Alana Stone is here to sing something. Hello, Alana. Hi. Gorgeous to have you back. Thank you. It's really awesome to be back. Hey, you're doing a show at the Opera House? Yeah, ask her where she's oh. touring. That goes well. <laughs> Are you going to be in Canberra on the... We're doing a gig at the Opera House on the 9th of July. Uh, when you say we, who's we? We is all of my friends, basically. It's like a big love fest of me. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. it's called Alana Stone and Friends. And I'm just getting my siblings, my, um, all my close friends who play music, and we're going to just jam it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a big advocate of the, uh, of the celebration of the self. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul had one last year in a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a, a clue for us? I do. Hang on a second, let me unstrap it. <laughs> <laughs> Holly came from Miami FLA Hitchhiked away across the USA Plucked her eyebrows on the way Shaved her legs and then he was a she She said, hey babe, take a walk on the wild said, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. And you know what the colored girls said? They said, do, 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 <laughs> That's fantastic. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, what a voice. That's great. Uh, more of that stuff at the end of the show, now to the game called A Thousand Words. Robin's team. Yes. Your best captions for these newsmakers, please. Okie okay, doke. No. All right. <gasps> you get the testicle of one miner in one hand and the testicle of a miner in the other hand and then you're down like this. And oh. when you say miner, you do mean... I mean, <laughs> I mean... So, uh... <laughs> uh, uh... I, I, I mean, the man with a light on his head. I, I think it's more like, and um, now the pen's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Come my, on. One day my puppets will turn up. <laughs> oh, I take the chicken and I go nom, 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 <laughs> nom, nom. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it looks like he's going, uh, careful, Tony, because I've got a lightsaber and all oh, that hurts when I hold it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Kev. <laughs> What if they're not his hands? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I was thinking there was a like a guy in the puppet door on these ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Frank so happy. <laughs> Should we have a look at the next one? Yeah, there sure. You go on. Come on, give it a crack. Obviously, they've they've just spotted Fergie on the roof. <laughs> I have no idea how the common person got up there, but someone shoot them off. <laughs> but does it look, you, you think William's tall? Look at Harry. <laughs> yeah, he's freakishly tall. He's freakishly tall, isn't it? I like the way it looks like Princess Michael of Kent has um, got a gun in the back of Prince Philip. <laughs> like, say, say one more racist thing and I shoot you. <laughs> I think it's three seconds before the Vovazellas come out. <laughs> Fergie's daughter's wearing one on her head, isn't she? <laughs> it's basically, I mean, they're tired of looking down their nose at everyone. They're having a crack at looking up their nose at people. <laughs> See how far up our nose. And uh, do you have a look at the last one? Come yeah. on, then. Oh. Uh, in the case of a fire, oxygen will drop from the ceiling. <laughs> the exits are here, here and here. Welcome to Pontiff Airlines. Where were the exits? <laughs> Did you ever know you were my hero? No, wait, no, wait, these three Jews walk into a bar. No, no, wait, you haven't 
This one, this one you haven't heard. It's like, everybody stay calm, we've hijacked this baby, we're going to Vegas. Because I'm bigger than Jesus now. Too much, too much. Hooper team, your thousand words begins with this hot threesome. <laughs> Is it something like the, the um, you labour guys, you think you're having fun now, but wait till we do to you what we learnt at the proctology conference? <laughs> or is it maybe, who wants a pie? <laughs> oh, you are horrible. You know what I thought when I th I was thinking, Mother Depp said, quack, 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 quack. <laughs> I think Abbott's just sitting there thinking, I hope that's a rolled up piece of paper he's tapping me in the back with. <laughs> oh, 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 Hooper, Hooper. How many thoughts has Tony had? One. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the next one. Oh, this is so sad. He wasn't found in a cabbage patch, he was found in a nicotine patch. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Cheech and Chong the early years, I think. <laughs> I choose to believe it's an actor who's playing the part of a child in a big rubber suit taking a break between shooting and that way I feel more comfortable about the whole thing. Uh, in, in recent news, he's, he has been weaned off the cigarettes, apparently. Mm. Down to 15 or yeah. all the way to zero? I'm not quite sure. No, where he's he rolling his own now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, what I'm trying to figure out was, was Warney in Indonesia about three years ago? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, we're going to bad places. I'll tell you what, though, and this is going to sound wrong, and, and it, yeah. but it makes me want to smoke. He does, he's enjoying it. He's really enjoying it. Like, if I'd have cracked it that young... It makes me want to drive a small plastic tractor. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't be smoking in the car. <laughs> And finally, this. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, he's clearly he's going, um, uh, you'll be loyal, won't you, boy? You're loyal, loyal. You're a loyal. Dogs are loyal, loyal, aren't they? Loyal, loyalty. You're loyal, 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 loyal. He's doing that for about 45 minutes, but we haven't got time. I think he's thinking, what a shame other voters can't be bribed with schmackos. <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like the dog's going, honestly, I don't know him. <laughs> yeah. But he's, but he's being polite about it. The dog isn't being rude. He's... Actually, I reckon the dog's just spotted Gillard. Yeah, I'll play with you. <laughs> well, the look of fear in his eyes, I think uh, Kevin's Who's, actually... Uh, the dog's or the dog's? Yes. The dog's eyes, cos I think uh, Kevin's going, you be a good boy or I'll insulate your kennel. <laughs> In our glorious leader's home state of Queensland, police have been given new powers to issue on-the-spot $100 fines for swearing in public. Shit, eh? <laughs> now, this will be a huge revenue raise. The government says the state budget could return to surplus with just one visit from Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> the new powers could save the government up to $30 million. The opposition leader poo-pooed the idea and was immediately fined $300. <laughs> It's going to be a brave new world. Good News Week will now come in a special Queensland-only six-minute edition. <laughs> and when addressing an officer, you need to be very careful you're not slapped with a fine a third of the way through Constable. <laughs> Robbins is now 25 points, Hoop is now 25 points after the break, so you think you can mind. <laughs> oh, it's time for a mime, Cal Wilson. Hey, I'm lovely kick now. You don't love me, do you? I love you. I love you. Well, why do you do this to <laughs> me? Especially with the one Frank's got. Right. Yeah, that, you can do that easily. Yeah, You've got yeah, the skills. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to need the axe. <laughs> 
Constantly. <laughs> It's there if you want to use it. No, no, just take it off Frank. I don't trust him. Um, oh, this is cruel. Oh, and mine cruel. is a walk in yours the park. Is, no, yours is oh. going to be beautiful. That's what it is. It's a walk in the park. A walk in the park. God, look at your shoes, woman. Oh, right. All right. Okay. 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 Has my time started? Did, did, did Witchy Poo die? <laughs> oh, I, like, I love them. Um, and your time starts now. Okay. <clears throat> right. One, one word. One word. What? Half? One word, first word. Oh, oh first, first word, first, first word. How many words, how many words in total? A million. Oh, a million. Right, okay, first word. First word. Okay. I think we're first... losing the whole mime thing early on. <laughs> okay. okay. Hat. Head. Chopping. Chop, chop, chop head chop. Saw. Saw. Carpenter. Carpenter. Uh, oh, 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 Karen Carpenter. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Carpenter. Oh, sorry, but she was believing. All right. It was, it was, it was whistling. It was whistling. Whistle, 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 whistling. Whistle, whistle, chop, <laughs> chop, whistle. Whistles, whistle, whistle, saw. I don't care what a whistle saw. I got a hundred problems with a whistle. <laughs> Wraith with thistle spray. Right. Can I defect? Yeah. Did it? <laughs> oh, we're doing quite well. Oh, okay, a whistle. <laughs> start again. Start again. Okay. Okay. One word. Hat. Helmet. Uh, oh, Carpenter. Builder. 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 Uh, builder. Builder. Uh, builder. Uh, uh, I, can, I, I can build a rainbow. Oh. <laughs> Construction worker. Yeah. You see? See, you should have gone straight to the, to the YMCA see, yeah. reference. Yeah. Maybe we would have had to go through Indian police. I would have gone, gone through them all. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I, think, I think Molly Meldrum did. <laughs> All right, stick with the construction worker. Construction okay, worker, right. right. Construction right. worker, right. Yeah, yeah, construction worker. And a sailor. And a sailor. <laughs> Saluting the flag. Ooh. Oh! oh! A proud Australian construction worker. Uh, no, not a, a, a proud iffy. A fat oh, American! Yeah, <laughs> 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 A fat yeah. American construction worker. Yeah. Okay. Flying a plane. Flies a plane. You can fly. Travels, 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 travels. Goes travels. to somewhere else. Else in the world. To play cricket. <laughs> play. To, to be Batman. <laughs> oh. Goes. Hello. Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan. Oh, Pakistan. He's living in Pakistan. <laughs> Yes, 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 so, yes. The fat construction worker flies to Pakistan. Forget the fat. Right. I was just being, I was just being racist towards Americans. Right. He's not fat. We're right behind you. They okay. would deep fry water if they could. American construction worker uh, goes to Pakistan, Pakistan to, 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 to look. look. To look. <laughs> oh, no, no. Look for, look for, uh, look for, uh, look for, uh, look for uh, the old mate in the cave. What's his name? Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Wait, right. Yep. Why? Does he need some shelves put up in his car? <laughs> I need some shelves. My books fall down all the time. No good. <laughs> and the whole way over you for regretting that obligation free quote. <laughs> Damn it, Taylor. Right. What the, there is no idea in Pakistan. No, 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 no. <laughs> what accent are you doing? <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. matter. He's in a cave. No one's heard him talk. And? And? To cons to oh to he's going to challenge him to a duel. <laughs> he's going to stab him. He's going to fence with him. What is it? What is it? Sword. Sword. Yes. He's going to stab. He's going to machete him. <laughs> he's going to master chef him to death. <laughs> yes. Your secret ingredient is terrorist. <laughs> He's got a sword. Yep. And he's and, and he's a, gonna, he's and gonna a gun. shoot Osama bin Laden with a sword. He's got some sort of crazy sword gun. <laughs> he's, got a crazy, he's got a lightsaber. He's got a lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. So Stay alive. Stay alive. Um, so he's going over there to shoot bin Laden. So he's nuts to start with. Yeah. He's got a ruler or a. Or a, or a tr you had it. Well, what's this hand doing? He's got a gun. Oh, he's, he's got a gun and a knife. Can, can you put together what yes. Cal has yes, come so, uh, this, yep, uh, Crazy uh, construction worker from America decides he wants to go be bounty hunter bloke into Pakistan to search for Osama bin Laden, and when he gets him, he's going to do the Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> Carl Wilson.
Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Something like that. Wasn't Something it? like that. It's that little bit of. It was the bit of Gilbert and Sullivan at the end that threw me. <laughs> It is annoying, isn't it? Uh, that doesn't dra draw Osama out of his cave, nothing. <laughs> what the hell? If you were confused, in a forest in northern Pakistan, authorities have detained a California man armed with a pistol and a sword who claimed he was on a solo mission to kill Osama bin Laden. So in Pakistan, it's hard to hide out in forests with a pistol and a metre-long sword, but apparently it's quite easy to get through customs. <laughs> uh, as well as the gun and sword, Gary Faulkner was carrying a Bible night vision goggles and a small amount of hashish on his mission to kill Bin Laden. Or convert Bin Laden, or just get stoned and watch him sleep. I reckon that started out as a really big bit of hashish when he first had it. <laughs> <laughs> and he slowly chipped off a bit on the way. The former construction worker insisted he was acting alone, but Pakistan is still on the lookout for a cop, a cowboy, an Indian. <laughs> and a leather man. Who will be the next to enter the Mime Arena? Find out right after this. Ba, ba, ba. So you think you can mime Frank Woodley? <laughs> you have a great. You have a bit of an issue with uh, the vuvuzela. Vuvuzela, or <laughs> more of a B sound? Bubuzela. Boo boo. Yeah, yeah. Boo -boo. It's, it, it, that's how the Africans are saying it. Bubuzela. No, but it, I can appreciate it. Once you have a go, it is very ad addictive. It's, it's very good. good to be on this end. Not so good to be on this end. Yeah. <laughs> There's your, um, there's your little... You can touch that if you want. Well, uh, OK. Yeah. So I take it down there? You can, yeah. yeah. After you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. There wasn't a lot of hard news this week, so that's... <laughs> it's, it's always an indication on who can read fast in the audience. <laughs> I think you'll be great. Yeah, 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 be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cal was brilliant. I know. You? Fantastic. Just, just do my one, Frank. I'll just try to do this at some stage. Oh yeah. But no, see, forget it. Okay. No, an extra ten points if you can use your clothing or your attire in right. some way that describes the situation. <laughs> hey, sweetie, don't give it away. Frank Woodley, your time starts now. <laughs> um, awkward man. Awkward man. No. <laughs> Opening a door, coming home. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, no. Better go out. Somebody, oh! Oh. I'll just. <laughs> Hi. Not again. <laughs> All right. So this lady wants. As a, as a man and some a woman. Money. They've just. Have they just come out of a hotel room together? Oh. No. No, they're coming home. He's coming well, home. She's a, she's she's a, wife. a prostitute. <laughs> she's the wife. Is she a wife or a prostitute? She's a wife. Oh, you're the wife? <laughs> Husband and wife? Oh. oh, you're the madam. You're the brothel madam. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, shut it up, Mimey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all of the ladies. The um, all single ladies. ladies. Um, <laughs> you want to choose? Policeman comes in. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> From an healing movie from you know the thirties <laughs> in England for some reason. So <laughs> with uh, um, uh, uh, and busting, then um, busting in, busting in, arresting, arrested mm -hmm. the man or the lady, just arresting randomly, over the place. everybody. <laughs> Oh, oh. He thought, oh, I'll check oh. out what's in here. Oh. Looked in the oh, cupboard. Oh. 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 oh, what is that? What is oh. <laughs> oh, he, st he steals. steals. He steals some of the gear. All the gear. And then the old. And then an old judge. Judge. Sentenced him to. The body. Sentenced the cop. Give them all to me. <laughs> dancing. <laughs> Go dancing with all. So these. the judge then confiscated all the goods. Oh no, who's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> the policeman got to keep all the items. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Ah, uh, Frank Woodley. Oh. I could watch you all day. <laughs> so Can did you put this it happen or was that an episode of The Bill? <laughs> uh, it happened. Oh, what so country? Can you put it all together? South Africa. Mm -hmm. This is one of the confiscated bots, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's important. Yep. That's important. Um, um. In. In um, Africa. Is that an ostrich or an um, emu? Australia? Yeah. Bird? Yeah. Australia? Yeah. What sort of... Emu? No. Ostrich? ostrich? You're talking ostrich? No. no. Um, what? <laughs> it's a flightless bird, ah, isn't it? Kiwi bird? Pelican. I'm glad this wasn't in the main body of the mind. Perth. Perth. Um, Perth. No, I'm trying to think of, um... Frank! Here, yeah. Sydney. Help me out with this. Oh. Why? Why? <laughs> 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 it's where the World Cup's being held. I thought it said South Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it says South, South Australia. Oh, I'm sorry. South Australia! <laughs> South Australia! Oh, yeah. Yes, well, it was a lovely way to end the mime. Uh, Black Swan. No, Black is Black Swan, Swan. South Australian? No, Western no, Australia. Yeah. Western Australia. Oh, oh what a saying, nodule. Yeah. Saying, yeah. What a freckling nodule. Have, that could have been the Sturt Desert Pea. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, Why they make that noise? Do you want to give us a round-up or should we just In duck into South it? In South Australia, yes? a police... A policeman who busted a brothel and made lots of arrests uh, filled a bag with toys and was allowed by the judge to keep them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, hope he, I hope he owns a lot of debt hole. <laughs> a magistrate in South Australia has awarded a brothel's entire collection of sex toys to police. Wow! Even though he admitted he didn't know what the cops would do with them. <laughs> Let's hope it starts with wash them. <laughs> the toys include a range of vibrators, dildos and fake vaginas. Officers say the first thing they'll do is enter them as evidence. <laughs> <laughs> After that, they'll enter them for entertainment. The, the sex toys will come in handy when they're playing good cock, bad cock. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I sorry. saw a room of fake vaginas. <laughs> In Adelaide, the long arm of the law now comes with a number of interesting attachments. <laughs> More criminals will be getting off in South Australia than ever before. <laughs> but be warned, if you're pulled over by the highway patrol <laughs> and told to assume the position, run. <laughs> run. <laughs> to my right, 50 points. To my left, 50 points. Coming up, hot spot. Questions about the news of the week, they have the hot spot, their wit, and only the horns God gave them. Robin's team, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> How can the government make Kevin cool again? How can the government make Kevin cool again? Put a spoiler on the back. <laughs> um, back from my day, Alma Fudd. So I changed his name from Kevin Rudd to Alma Fudd. Oh. <laughs> He's cool. Show He's me. cool. Oh, I hate that waskawee abbot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. Every time he delivers any sort of statement, it, it just comes up with a big circular screen that goes, that's all, folks. <laughs> well, he works best when he rhymes, you know, Kevin 07, so maybe if he puts on lots of weight, they can call him Cuddly Rudley. <laughs> Being, being caught in a strip joint kind of seemed to work for him and give him a bit of a credit. Oh, yeah. cred. I'd like to see him actually pole dancing. <laughs> Spelt P O L L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. What about just some ink? Give him a tat that says, My brother's. I don't know, something. <laughs> My, my, my bro I'll work on it, but, you know, like, some tattoos and, sh and shit. <laughs> so, rework the split ends, classic. I see Rudd, I see Rudd, I see Rudd. <laughs> what election promise would make you sit up and take notice? My name's Kevin Rudd. I'm going to get a spoiler on the back. 
From now on, everybody gets electric hospital beds. <laughs> Sit up and take notice, it was a shocking... Oh. <laughs> Free pandas. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Oh. You could ride them home. <laughs> what about if they promise not to be there in the morning? Um, he could go over to South Africa and actually ban the Vuvuzela. Yeah. If he gets that done, I'm sure you'll get... No Vuvu. Uh, a, a Labor delegate will come into your house every single night, just as you... Just at that point, you know, when you're almost going off to sleep and they'll um, rub some Vaseline on your chest. <laughs> not Vaseline. No, 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 What's not Vaseline? What's it called? Vicks. Vicks. <laughs> <laughs> they'll rub some Vaseline on your chest and then they'll force you into a very small space. <laughs> called, <laughs> called a nursing home. <laughs> Just on another point, uh, honestly, mate, never get those jars confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we, we've had some fun, but seriously, trust me. <laughs> Although both can make you feel better. <laughs> I'm going to move along now. <laughs> What's the best thing about raising the speed limit? What's the best thing about raising... The spoiler on the back! <laughs> I think the best thing is... <laughs> and that's because it's really... <laughs> <laughs> Being able to overtake pea platers will be good. <laughs> How do you know you're going too fast? Wife normally tells me. <laughs> <laughs> you have to trust your intuition! You've slid into the back seat. <laughs> what road rule would you like to introduce? Oh. I've always... Sorry. I've always, you know when you get a broken line and an unbroken line, I've always reckoned that should mean you can overtake but you can't get back again. <laughs> I've always wanted that. That's just jazz, jazz it up. I mean, I've always thought. Uh, basically, I think that any car with a light on top should be a cab. <laughs> Is there, yeah. No, if there's anyone in, in the back of the ambulance? No, fine, I want to go home. Thank you very much. Um, lollipop ladies should be allowed to do tricks with their sticks. <laughs> Get back! <laughs> Bang! <laughs> That'll teach you, you pesky little four-year-old. <laughs> If you get caught speeding or something and they actually pull you over and you're dressed as something like really funny, <laughs> they can't give you a fine. <laughs> yeah! oh. If you're talking, yeah, if a cop's going to book you, they can either give you the lecture or book you, but you can't book me and give me the lecture. <laughs> One or the other. If you give me the lecture, then you've got to let me go. Because the lecture's imp imp implied in the fine. <laughs> Yeah, if you wear a costume, you don't get booked. And then, like, Kevin Rudd could speed all he wants because they'd be like, oh, no, it's Elmer Fudge. <laughs> no, do you get it? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh it's a stand off. Spot. What if, if you got caught to say you were intoxicated, all you had to do was, like, have a dance-off with your mates or something? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, if you were good, they'd just go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good, fine. <laughs> Are, you, are these all coming from personal experience? No. <laughs> what else can you use a vuvu or vuvuzela for? Uh, colonoscopy? <laughs> Wish that hadn't gone first. <laughs> Yard glass. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a cigarette holder for an enormous cigarette. <laughs> I know we're going over a, a, a old ground, but you, would you guys all mind making the sound for me? Oh, sure. Ma Ma
You could use it as a unicorn cosy. <laughs> or I don't know what you could be using it for. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Give them all a round of applause. Sad we have to leave it there. Strange but true is next. Claire, Frank, Melissa, your clues were the China. Mm -hmm. I turned it into a portrait of you, Paul. There oh, isn't that cute? Striking. <laughs> it's exactly the same. See? <laughs> oh, that's even three in the morning. <laughs> China. China. That nearly broke, which would have. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's fine, China. I can tell by the sound. That's safety there, just in case if it's a little hot too hard. Hang on. Oh. All right. You see, it all still holds together by the little... Yeah. Lovely. Is that's... there anything on our set you're not going to break? <laughs> see, Frank, this is why your parents wouldn't give you nice things. Uh, no, I don't. And then I've got this, which I'm not sure... It's a chest expander? chest expander. You probably want to be a fella if you're using that, because there could be an incident. Oh, see, you're on my mind. Oh, 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 oh. You know... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> The sound guy. You have to put in your pocket outside. Have I mentioned why you don't get nice things? <laughs> Look at the sound people. They're like meerkats. They've all gone like that. <laughs> Just as that... <laughs> Just as that happened, I had a little flashback to about ten minutes ago when the guy said to me, be careful of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and this. Alana Stone. Alana Stone! <laughs> watching a Muppet give a blowjob. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. Are you there yet, Kermit? <laughs> uh, please thank Alana Stone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, shameful backing vocals. Shameful. <laughs> Do we have an answer? I, well, um, I don't. I just think that this probably means China. I've just been playing in China and... There are a lot of people in China, so I'm thinking the male part of the population is finding it very hard to get into various national sporting teams, so they're boosting up their chests oh, to yes. make them look more feminine. I must, I must. To play in the female 
side of the yeah, right. National. And hence the walk on the wild side, the like cross-dressing yeah. thing. Yeah. So well, maybe. So, so, but okay, okay. No, is it? <laughs> There's a story out of China a couple of weeks ago about a just a regular guy, a dairy farmer, I think, who's grown the what they're calling the largest has grown the largest man boobs in the world. And people can use his man milk in their tea tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or something? Is it, my, is, it my... that, is it a story about the giant man boobs? Or about the cross-dressing athletes? My father's <laughs> a cross-dresser, he's not a transvestite, he just gets really angry putting on his pants. <laughs> I think there's a, a man boob phenomenon happening in, in China, China at the moment. Yes. Don't they have a one boob policy? <laughs> <laughs> and it's what they're doing uh, to combat it, I suppose, or make men feel more comfortable. What? The bras? Oh, the bras! In China, the man boob bras. Yes. So, Paul, what it is is that uh, well, what is, is that this now? man who's grown big boobs needs a bra so that he can compete in competitive ladies' sports. The end. Uh, <laughs> very close, ladies and gentlemen. Seven points. Thank you. Uh, the latest fashion trend for Chinese men is the man bra. Uh, for obvious reasons, they're not so keen on tank tops. <laughs> uh, the beauty of wearing a man bra is any time you want to perv at some impressive cleavage, all you have to do is look down. <laughs> men say wearing the bra makes them feel less insecure, more comfortable and less likely to get a speeding ticket. <laughs> Not only does the man bra give guys some much needed support, but a thrilling frisson of excitement when they take it off. <laughs> some men wanted a man bra so they could practice undoing it for when they're with a lady. Unfortunately, wearing a man bra means they never will be. <laughs> Don't move. More strange but true, coming right up. Time to get stuck into strange but true. Mikey Calpita, you had the headstone. Boo. It's like the, it's like the cheapest haunted house in history. <laughs> mm. Here comes the next scary part. The worms. That is like living spaghetti. <laughs> and this. And this. And this. Who is this? This is Ray Thistlethwaite. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Thistlethwaite. Thank you much. He's back. Satellite's gone up to the sky Things like that drive me out of my mind yeah. I watch it for a little while I like to watch things on TV Some of the greatest backing vocals of all time. <laughs> give, us, give us your bong bong bongs again. <laughs> oh, not my greatest, but. Bong 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 bong. <laughs> Satellite. Bong, bong bong bong. Yeah. I think you have to tell me an answer. I, th I believe we, we will. Tim. And after all that, I don't think your points are going to be that high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, obviously, uh, this represents. Um, the dead! <laughs> yeah, dead people. Um, <laughs> And, and, and graveyards, and graveyards. And, and if, you, if you look around, particularly like in, in, in the major capital cities of Australia, 
graveyards take up a hell of a lot of space. Too much space. Yeah, I know. People have had enough of the old-fashioned graveyard and they want to get in some new graveyard, which involves no coffins. Well, actually, a biodegradable coffin. That's it. It'll break down. That's what I meant. <laughs> You'll break down. But, but you can find your uh, rally with um, like a... Like a GPS. That's it. Yeah, basically, with the, with the, with the rally, they... they <laughs> stick one down Grandma's throat like you do with a cat and then bury it. <laughs> <laughs> and then she rots away and you're left with that and you use your Tom Tom gone. <laughs> It's just like, you know... <laughs> you have arrived at the corpse. <laughs> uh, yes, um, so, so, can you use your mobile phone? Yes, it, it's Because yeah. I love that idea of, like, I've just got a text from Gray and she says, get off my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh! You've gotten that text too. Um, <laughs> haven't they... They've offered cameras in coffins so that you can watch your loved one's face decompose oh. if you want. Yeah, it's only for the truly freaky people. I'm pretty sure it's only in America that's been offered, but there is a company who is offering to put cameras in your coffins. Right. And on. then you can have a you can have a link up. It's, it's your decomposing Facebook. Uh, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to the question, they have it right, ten points. Sydney's first natural burial park has opened where there are no expensive coffins or embalming, so the dear departed slowly decompose and return to the earth. Oh. There are no headstones, but as said, a GPS locator is placed in each plot, so your loved one can be located by mobile phone to the nearest three kilometres. <laughs> <laughs> the grounds are peaceful and uncluttered, and the abundant mushrooms are delicious. <laughs> The National Cemetery is a response to Sydney's lack of burial space. It's also a much better idea than the previously suggested massive pile of dead. <laughs> Here is the game that the small people love. Oh. Beep is fast money. <laughs> All the little people, they love it for sure. In Germany, a woman was pulled over by police for failing to properly secure a child in a moving vehicle. What was she doing? She was breastfeeding the child. Oh, oh I love it when you just jump in like that and steal their points. I'm allowed to do that though, aren't I? No, not Can really. I was told I'm allowed to Shut do up. that. Well done, Francis. In Sydney? Breastfeeding the child. <laughs> Sadly, that's a loss of five points for you, oh. Mike. Oh. You might have to. So far in front, you don't have to worry. Unfortunately, uh, she, had to, she had to take a break from breastfeeding the child for a moment while he had a cigarette. But, um, in, <laughs> you are such an asterisk. In Sydney... <laughs> in Sydney, two men were arrested after holding up a pizza delivery guy outside a house in Crow's Nest. How did the police catch them? Oh, yes, Melissa? They had an argument. Once they finished the robbery, they had an argument and one of the guys called the police on him. And the other one... Brilliant. Oh, oh. Brilliant. Okay, the last one uh, I'm going to throw open, but as you've noticed from Frank, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> In Norway, a 12-year-old boy saved his sister from a moose attack by <laughs> using his computer game skills. What did he do? Oh, he, he used a war cry to, to distract the moose. And then pretended to be dead. Yes! They have it all. <laughs> no, you made up a lot of ground. I was so sure that was going to be... He jumped on the moose and went... <laughs> 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 He, he taunted. He uh, well, it was it was charging his sister. Huh? So he taunted it. A move he learned in uh, World of Warcraft to distract oh, monsters. Yes. Then feign death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, until another skill he picked up at level thirty. Apparently, <laughs> the moose lost interest in the inanimate boy and walked off into the woods. Next time it's playing World of Warcraft, it's going to go. Hey, what are oh, that little shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, so in the penalty shootout tonight, Mikey Robbins, Cal Wilson, and Peter Burner scored a cool, calm, and collected. 129 points! <laughs> Pipping Claire Hooper, Frank Woodley and Melissa Barbieri on 124 points. Tend.com.au oh. <laughs> slash GMW is the place to get the podcast, see the extra stuff or discover what the South Australian police like to do with a Vuvuzela. <laughs> so we say World Cup next year, Matildas! Yes. 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 <laughs> 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 I must stop taking the Viagra. <laughs> and, and we'll leave you with the good news for the week ahead. 
Uh, the new show from Disney on Ice will hit Adelaide, but it's not as good as Dora the Explorer on crack. <laughs> Sydney... <laughs> Sydney will host the Alpine Winter Festival, the one day of the year when it's still cool to smoke menthols. <laughs> Sunday is Djibouti National Day. That's right, Djibouti. I didn't know either. Uh, apparently it's a small independent republic bent on world domination. <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> this week also sees the national days of Slovenia, Madagascar, Mozambique and Luxembourg. It's like the United Nations of who? <laughs> Morocco. <laughs> oh, it's rude, isn't it? It's rude, it's very rude. Actually, very dismissive of other countries. I like Djibouti. It shakes. Mm. Shake Djibouti. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco is hosting the next meeting of the International Whaling Commission and Japan will come away with a great new recipe for spiced humpback and couscous. <laughs> the CEO of the National Rugby League, David Gallup, will give a talk on the future of the game. <laughs> Won't take long. <laughs> and on Saturday, it'll be one year since Michael Jackson died. And he looks as good now as he did in 2009. <laughs>